Hey guys, I'm Leo Reinhardt, the Guitar Maniac, and today I'm going to take a closer look at the storm boxes from the Legend Amp series made by Russian brand AMT. And if you think that those are ordinary overdrive or distortion pedals, guess what? You are wrong. Those are actual the electric guitar pre-amplifiers made in storm box format. And as uh, the name says, uh, they are supposed to recreate the sound of the legendary amps. For example, the M1 is uh, the Marshall GCM 800, or R1 is uh, the rectifier. So, how does it work? Let's take a closer look at it. Operating the LA preamp is dead simple. You connect your guitar to the input of uh, the LA preamp and the output you connect either to a speaker emulator or to the return section of uh, your FX uh, send return loop. Yes, note, to the return of your send return loop of your amplifier. And that's what uh, was the problem with the bad reviews of some uh, users. Because they wanted to use it as the ordinary distortion or overdrive pedal and they connected it to the uh, input of the amplifiers. And basically this device emulates the preamp section of the amplifier and uh, if you connect it to the input, so the uh, preamp section goes into preamp section and it gets an uh, overprocess signal at the end. So it uh, has... Um, Level knob, the gain knob, it uh, has a three band EQ and it can work with both uh, batteries or 12 uh, or 9 volt DC power supply. And for those uh, who doesn't have any uh, speaker emulators, it has actually a cap sim output, with, uh, as it says the output that emulates uh, the cabinet. Well, and uh, I must say, this has a uh, much better cabinet emulation as uh, the SS11A. Well, at least I uh, like it more. Both M1 and R1 emulate the overdriven guitar sound. And if you switch them off, uh, you simply bypass uh, the signal. And what do you do if you want to play clean sound? For these purposes, uh, there are two versions of the uh, guitar amplifiers V1 or F1. Uh, it uh, stands for either Fender amp or Vox amp. This is a slightly more expensive device and it has slightly more connections. It has, uh, besides input and output, uh, a channel send and a channel return, and uh, a fix send and a fix return as well. So, you can actually combine both of those devices to, to get some sort of emulation of a two-channel guitar amplifier with a clean and uh, overdriven channel. So, how do you do that? So, you simply plug your guitar into the input of uh, your uh, clean guitar preamp and you connect output to the FX uh, return of your amplifier or to your speaker emulator and you connect a channel send to the input of your overdriven guitar preamp and the output of your preamp you uh, connect to the channel return. And a fix send and a fix return you can use for different uh, storm boxes uh, such as delay. And so uh, this is how you connect both of those devices. But for me, I like to have at least a three channel amplifier clean, crunch, and uh, lead. And uh, M1 is perfectly for crunchy sound. R1 is perfectly for lead sound and how do you connect three of those devices? Well, it might get a bit uh, trickier. For these purposes I have uh, such an AB 
selector. Well, basically, you have here input the send and return of A section and send and return of B section. And it can actually work without any power supply because uh, you have nothing but uh, the simplest uh, button over here. And power supply you need only for those indicators uh, to see uh, which channel you are on. And so how do we do it? You connect your guitar to the input of your V1 amplifier and the channel send you connect to the input of uh, your uh, uh, channel selector. And then you connect uh, to the A send and return section one guitar preamp and to the B send and return uh, the second uh, guitar preamp. The output you connect to the channel return and the output of your V1 you connect uh, to the speaker emulator or to uh, the return channel of your guitar amplifier. Well, this is uh, a lot of cables, but it actually works and uh, it doesn't take a lot of space in, on your pedal board. Well, I have to admit that EMT did really great job uh, recreating the sound of the tube guitar amplifier while using the analog solid state technology. And the best part is you can actually uh, connect the external overdrive or distortion pedals and it will still sound great. And while I was trying to figure out whether I like the sound of the solid state preamps or not, EMT came up with the second generation of the Legend Amp series. And the difference is not only that uh, there is uh, two instead of one, but in a couple of more options uh, that it offers. Well, first of all, you can use it as both as a distortion pedal or as the preamplifier. And basically there are three outputs. One is for the uh, cabinet emulated output, the other one is uh, the output of your preamplifier and the third one is if you would like it to use as a distortion. And if you use it as a distortion it bypasses uh, the signal when it's switched off. And if you use it as a preamp, if you switch the preamp off it gets in a clean mode and uh, it emulates uh, the uh, sound of the Fender amplifier. And at first I was kind of skeptical that uh, you can't actually make any settings with a clean sound, but uh, it kind of sounds okay. And uh, mostly I use uh, this pedal as a distortion pedal and not as a preamp pedal.
And of course, uh, it's uh, slightly more expensive than the first generation, about 160 euro. And is it worth it? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, this uh, distortion pedal was about 20 euro new. Uh, this is 160 euro. Well, but there are some distortion pedals uh, that are uh, uh, over 200 euro. Well, these both sound great. Uh, whether you would like it or not, it's uh, all dependent on your budget and uh, your preferences. For me, this sounds uh, really awesome as a distortion pedal. Well, but does it sound good in a mix? For this test, I used uh, my instrumental track uh, Insomnia. That was basically recorded with the AMT SS 11A preamp with a couple of uh, Cambinet impulse responses. And I reamped it using the M1 for a crunchy rhythm uh, uh, channel. And uh, R1 and the E2 that emulates the angle amplifiers as uh, the lead uh, uh, the guitar sound. So, let's check it out. And in conclusion, what can I say? I actually like the results that I've got uh, reamping the guitar with the solid state uh, preamps. Uh, but this wouldn't be my first choice uh, for my favorite electric guitar sound. There is something missing, and I guess uh, this is uh, the natural tube compression when you play with the real tubes. Well, uh, I don't uh, get the same articulation and uh, there is something missing and I try to compensate it by hitting uh, the strings harder and this is not point of playing the guitar. Uh, so, those devices have a couple of advantages uh, uh, to SS11A and basically I like uh, the uh, EQ settings of the uh, Legend M series. It's kind of weird, especially in uh, the overdriven channel of uh, the SS11A, because I couldn't get uh, quite uh, the same result with the EQ settings of the SS11A, and it doesn't work in uh, all kind of genres. And uh, you have to be careful with the uh, gain uh, settings of the overdriven channel because either it's uh, not enough or it's too much and finding the sweet spot is kind of challenging. I really like the sound of SS11A but it doesn't work in any context uh, of your music. Sometimes uh, I would prefer something different uh, instead of SS11A. And 
I would grab uh, some of these preamps, but I still uh, kind of uh, missing uh, this articulation while playing the guitar. And so, as uh, the reamping tool, I guess uh, this is great, and I can't say enough. Uh, bad things about it because I know a lot of uh, good guitar players uh, who actually get great results with it. So in conclusion, can I recommend it? And so this uh, gets kind of tricky. I guess you have to figure out for your own whether you like the sound and uh, the plain feeling uh, of these devices because it might work for you uh, and it doesn't have to work for me. Well, at least if you order this at Toman with a good return policy, you can check it out for yourself and uh, decide for yourself uh, if uh, it's worth of uh, investing uh, money or not. Well, why would you grab these devices in the first place? First of all, you are on a low budget, and second, you are trying to get some minimalistic pedal board and get rid of the uh, huge uh, guitar amplifiers. Well, if you like the sound of those devices, so a couple of hundred euro is pretty uh, okay. So, should you grab the first generation or the second generation. So you have uh, decide for yourself as well whether you like to uh, use it as a pre-amplifier or as a distortion. And I have to admit the distortion uh, function of the second generation is really great. So I would uh, grab it alone for this function. Well. But there is actually another brick in the wall that's also from the EMT. But this is uh, the issue for my new episode. So stay tuned, have a nice day and keep on rocking!